Hi everyone. In this video, you are going to see the continuation of FPGA logic families. So, FPGA families we have seen uh, there are different types of families like Cortex families, Altera, Spartan, and Vertex. In the previous video, you have seen Altera Flex 8000 uh, Flex FPGA family where it consists of CLBs, each CLB consisting of eight logic elements and each logic element again consisting of four input LUTs, D flip flops and multiplexers. Now in this video you are going to see a logic family that comes under Xilinx logic family with the series name XC4000. Okay, the logic family name as XC4000, it is the logic family name where this logic family also consists of the configurable logic blocks, switch matrix, IOBs and all these interconnecting wires. Okay, if you see the names here clearly tells that it is the switch matrix. Switch matrix SWM refers to the switch matrix. IOB is nothing but input output buffers input output buffers different logic families different FPGA families are having different names some may call this as IO blocks and some may call it as IO buffers or some families may call it as IO elements so whatever it is it is used to communicate with the external devices okay and this is the configurable logic block where the logic function has to be implemented configurable logic block configurable logic block and all these are interconnecting wires so interconnects interconnects so in the basic FPGA architecture I told you that uh, function of each and every logic element like IO buffers uh, is used to communicate with the external devices to transfer the data or to take the data and switch matrix is used to transfer the data among the interconnects that means horizontal data can be transferred to vertical or vertical to horizontal and configurable logic block is the main block or heart of the FPGA where the function is going to be implemented and interconnects are used to transfer the data among configurable logic blocks. If you see the configurable logic block again it is having different logic elements like function generators there are three function generators we are having g f and h these are the three function generators used to implement any type of logic function followed by various registers and multiplexers so if you see this is the 4 by 1 multiplexer it is 2 by 1 multiplexer and again this is the 4 by 1 multiplexer and here it is 2 by 1 multiplexer so uh, followed by different uh, multiplexers to where multiplexers we are having controllers and D flip flops. It is D flip flop with all the inputs preset and clear inputs. Okay. So this type of uh, configurable logic block that uh, we are having in the XC4000 logic family. So uh, if you are having the basic architecture of XC4000 that consists of XC4000 this family consists of we can say configurable logic block local and global routing local and global routing programmable IO buffers IO buffers which are programmable we can change its data and SRAM based memory configuration SRAM based memory configuration ok so each CLB again each CLB consisting of each CLB consists of so what we have seen, HCLB consists of lookup tables, lookup table is the heart of the CLB and multiplexers, next registers, 
resistors is also made up of flip flops but a resistor and flip flop difference is resistor consisting of group of flip flops it is used to store group of bits and path for control signal path for control signal again each clb internally consisting of not only these they are also having function generators based on lookup table with each having 5 nanometers delay suppose if you take each clb contains three function generators namely g h and f these are the three function generators you are having in that clb and each function generator is based on the lut with the 5 nanoseconds delay independent of function being implemented whatever the function you are going to implement but irrespective of that function each function generator each function generator is nothing but that logic circuit provides 5 nanometers 5 sorry 5 nanoseconds delay irrespective of logic function irrespective of logic function whether it is under gate or gate or nand gate whatever the logic function that is implemented with respect to these three that particular logic uh, function generator will provide 5 nanoseconds of time delay two function generators like f and g can generate any arbitrary function of four inputs and third generator which is h can generate any boolean function of three input functions okay so two function generators two function generators like f and g these two are used to implement any type of logic function with the four inputs can generate any arbitrary function or any logic function with four inputs but H function generator can generate logic function with three inputs only because see here in the figure you can understand here the G and F function generators are having four inputs g1 to g4 and f1 to f4 but whereas f is a function generator that also used to implement any type of arbitrary logic function but only accepts three inputs h1 to h3 okay gives you one output so this is the difference between these three logic functions and h function block can get inputs from either f or g lut's are from the external inputs as we have seen in the figure we can understand that the h logic function will get the inputs from the h or f or g the three function generators are programmed to generate two different functions three independent sets of variables and any arbitrary function of five variables any arbitrary function of four variables okay that depends upon the type of the logic function you are going to implement now that is about the fpga family which is a xilinx family which is a old family we can say all xilinx families are old families now xilinx is part on two family which is a lab oriented family because it is a very um, low level families spartan and alter all these are low level families where Vertex is the high end family, industry level family, high performance families. So, coming to this Spartan 2, 
This is part on two uh, contains several logic and memory resources that can support 15 kilo to 200 kilo system gates and up to 57 kilobits block RAM storage. See here if you see the FPGA architecture and compare with the basic and previous architectures we have seen. This particular Spartan 2 FPGA is having additional feature like DLL. Delay lock loop. DLL stands for delay lock loop. This particular delay lock loop has been put at four corners of this FPGA architecture. Along with this DLL, four more block RAMs are there, which each block RAM can have a memory location of 406 bits RAM. Okay, so each RAM can store up to 406 bits of information, and in additionally, the along with these, we are having normal architecture like IO pads. All these small squares surrounded by this FPG architecture are nothing but I.O. blocks or I.O. pads. And we are having a block RAM which is used to store the information to be transferred among the CLBs. And you are also having uh, block RAMs on left hand side as well. Okay, right hand side and as well as the left hand side that depends upon the number of configurable logic blocks we are using here if you see this these three plus three total six and here one two three four so totally 24 configurable logic blocks are there to be recognized as one set and all these configurable logic blocks are operated with this block ram and similarly to few more 24 clbs are operated with this block ram and similarly, this block RAM handles 24 on the left hand side and here also same. So likewise, we are dividing the entire logic cells and configurable logic blocks depending upon the block RAM capability. And on the, uh, upon this, we are having IO cells at the bottom and as well as at the top. And on the right hand side, uh, after this block RAM and uh, on the left hand side also. Okay. So each of four quadrants, each of four quadrants of CLBs is supported by is supported by DLL delay lock loop bounded. by 406 I already told you bounded by 406 bits block RAM what is the purpose of this block RAM block RAM is used to store the information that to be transferred among the configurable logic blocks periphery maximum capacity is 406 bits periphery of the chip is periphery of the chip is lined with is lined with IOB input output buffer each CLB is each CLB is contains four logic cells Four logic cells organized as a pair of slices. Organized as a pair of slices. Okay, that means in the previous uh, architecture you have one configurable logic block like uh, we can say logic array block lab. That lab consists of eight logic elements. Each logic element consists of again one logic function to be implemented using the LUTs, multiplexer and flip flop. Here also in the same way we are having each configurable logic block contains four logic cells organized as a pair of slices. And each logic cell has 
each logic cell has four input LUT logic for carry and control and a D flip-flop as you are having in the basic architecture okay so again each LUT can configure as a 16 by 1 RAM and a pair of LUT in the logic cell configured as 16 by 2 bit RAM or 32 by 1 bit RAM that depends upon the application we are going to use so it can be it can be used as 16 by 1 RAM or 16 by 2 RAM or even 32 by 1 bit RAM. So these are the different uh, forms that we can use the 4 input LUT. And IOBs are individually programmed to separate references output and termination voltage for high speed memory bus standards. Okay. So let us see the input output buffer of the Spartan 2 architecture where it is having several D flip flops followed by programmable networks like programmable BIOS, ESD network and followed by package bins and different architectures are there. See here programmable output buffer is there and programmable input buffer is there. This is the main part where we can program the data to be transferred among these D flip flops. Okay, so at the input you are having a T clock, TCE, SR, set and reset and OCE, IQ and this one, one is nothing but we are just giving a data that gives to be transferred and ICE here enable. So all these are different inputs we are giving for this IO buffer where the why this IOB consisting of these many is, and I told you in the beginning, this IOB where we are using for this uh, FPGA family is a programmable IOB. Programmable IOB. See, if you see this architecture, you are having several IO blocks which are placed on all the four corners of this FPGA architecture. Okay, all these are also programmable, which is more advantageous that we can change or transfer the data among the CLBs. So each IOB has three registers functioning as a D flip flop or as a level sense to latches. So as we have seen here, three D flip flops are there. One register T flip flop, one register T flip flop here. Used to register the signal that controls the programmable output buffer. Second register like a, a D flip flop we can see is programmed to register a signal from internal logic. Alternatively, a signal from internal logic can pass directly to the output buffer. Output buffer, this one. Okay, so from this we are taking the it's, this D flip flop, we are naming it as OFF. The output, the input is taken O and directly transferred to this output buffer. Third device, this one, third device. To register signal coming from the IO pad. To register the signal coming from the IO pad. And a common clock drives each register but has an independent clock enable. As an independent clock enable. This is independent clock enable. Independent clock enable. And here we are using a common clock for all these three different flip flops. D flip flop, T flip flop and Again, last one is a D flip flop with name I flip flop. All these are having common clock, but has an independent clock enable. This one clock enable, this one clock enable. Here it is a clock enable. Programmable delay element on the input path used to eliminate the pad to pad whole time. So this comes under a Spartan 2 logic family where it is a lab oriented logic families, lab oriented FPGA family. Okay. You will see vertex logic, vertex FPGA families in the next video. Thank you.